Hello, good afternoon and welcome to your weekly live at five. But that's only if you're in the UK, it's at five o'clock. Mm -hmm. Everywhere else, it's a different time. So, if you're watching me live, give me a hashtag live in the comments below. And if you're grabbing me on replay, just give me a wee hashtag replay in the comments below. So let me just do my wee check to make sure we are indeed live because we know we have had some challenges in the past. We don't want those challenges to keep happening. So I'm on my phone, as you can probably tell by the, the crazy, crazy camera work. Right, hold on. This is going to come. That's weird, doesn't it? That's weird. I watch myself do it and watch myself here do it. Um, okay, dokie. So tonight we are talking about the five fundamentals for longevity, for health and long term success with your body composition goals. Alrighty. So these are fundamentals for life. These should not be short term quick fix changes to implement. These are things that we should all be looking at. Now, every this is not going to be personalised to any one person because everybody has um, their own strengths. Everybody has areas to work on. So although there's, there's five fundamentals, some people might only need to be working on three of those. Some people will need to be working on five. Some people might need to really focus their efforts on one area. Okay, so I'm going to cover off all five tonight. And yeah, if you've got any questions, please ask them in the comments. I will check the comments before we finish up to make sure I capture uh, your questions and answers. Now... I think what we'll do is this started off with I was reading some research about the current state of the nation, the, the Western world in terms of female health um, and the key contributors to um, shortened life expectancy. And I'm sure it's no surprise to anybody, but obesity is up there with the most, the easiest thing that we can prevent that's going to help us all live longer. Um, so basically, looking at um, COVID, one of the key key things coming out of that, of people that are having long COVID, people that are sadly passing away, tends to come down to what some common denominators include, not exclusive to, but do include obesity. Um, same with some cancers as well. Can they, they reckon that current research is showing that you know losing weight is the single easiest thing that we can do to help reduce our risk of some cancers? So kind of got me thinking a little bit and thinking about you know well why everybody's everybody is on social media and you guys are here with me in a group that is talking about you know how to how to lose body fat for good. So everybody wants a magic wand and there is no magic wand. If I had a magic wand, I would share it with you all, but I don't. I do have a very unique approach to how we do what we do and it is very, very successful, but it's not a magic word. Work. It's not a magic word either, but it's not a magic wand because everybody has to put in the work. Everybody has to get outside their comfort zone. Everybody has to do the shiz that's going to get the results. But I got thinking about the common principles of what we do here and what we, how we can apply it to normal life. So the document that I'm referring to, the link is in the description of this video. And this is yours to keep. Please don't share it. Uh, I've not even put my logo on it. That's a bit... What an idea. Have I put my logo on it? No. What an idea. Not even put the logo on. So there is not... This is not what takes precedence over something else. It's five fundamentals. Every area is as important as the next. So we're going to tackle nutrition first. Now, nutrition for health and nutrition for fat loss can be two very different things. Some people eat very clean. They eat very healthy single ingredient foods, but they can still be very overweight. Some people can eat very unhealthy foods and be 
at a healthy weight, healthy BMI. Now, in order to be that we need to apply both principles for long term success. OK, so it is highly unlikely. I am certainly not an advocate of it. It's highly unlikely anybody in this group is going to be eating whole single ingredient foods 100 percent of the time. Highly unlikely because we have lives, we have problems, we have stress, we have multiple plates to spin. So yes, at times there might be processed food, at times there may be alcohol, there's likely going to be caffeine. You know, we're not going to, we're not purists here. There are some groups out there, if you want to just eat the grains, then go ahead and eat the grains, uh, no judgment. But so to for fat loss principles, we know we have to be in a calorie deficit. For health, we need to have nutrients. We need macronutrients, which is your protein, carbs and fats. And we need our micronutrients, which are vitamins and minerals and things like fibre and whatnot. So when it comes to fundamental health and fat loss, yes, we need to be in a calorie deficit. And if you need help figuring out what that looks like for you, there is a training in the guide section. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but go and have a look at that and how to do that. We need we need to have fruit and veg. It's a non-negotiable. You know, we have we get so many nutritional and health benefits from fruit and veg. Five portions of fruit and veg a day is the absolute minimum. OK, now we are advocates here of better, not best. So if you're not eating any fruit and veg a day, then aim for two. You know, grab an apple and grab some carrots. You know, it's simple. Grab, you know, from a time saving point of view, Go and get some steam fresh frozen veg. You know, one of those wee pouches, I think, is two portions of fruit and veg. So five portions of fruit and veg. Get more if you can. As a country, as a culture, we do not eat enough fruit and veg. Okay. Very important that we get protein in. Now, protein has two, three primary benefits for us, especially as girls over 40. Now, from about the age of 35 onwards, our muscle mass starts depleting. Okay, it's just a symptom of aging and that means our metabolism slows down, which then means it's easier to gain weight and harder to lose. So getting our protein in, and in conjunction with resistance training, is going to help increase our muscle mass, which again is going to help us live longer, burn more fat. Okay, so more muscle mass equals strength, Strength equals longevity. So the more muscle you have, the longer you're going to live. All right. So simple as that. Strong people live longer. This is simple. So protein also a non-negotiable. Now, obviously, we want to be trying to get that from as single ingredient foods as possible. We may need to supplement that with whey protein or plant protein powders because it's not... There's also the, the culture element of we've been conditioned that we shouldn't be eating an awful lot of food. So eating more meat or dairy produce or um, high protein goods might make us feel that we're, we're eat, overeating, which is not normally the case, but we might need to supplement. And we live our life by the 80-20 principle. So 80% really good, healthy, healthy foods. 20% crap. You know, if you want a McDonald's, then we should be having McDonald's. You know, if you want uh, to have a glass of wine on a Friday night, have a glass of wine on a Friday night. But it's all about, you know, don't be having a bottle of wine every single night because that's going to take that way over the 80-20 principle. Um, so that's nutritional guidance. So nutrition is fundamental to health. Okay. Um, exercise, again, absolute non-negotiable um it is you know we are as a generation quite sedentary you know office jobs um not really getting out we have we have dark deep horrible miserable winters so we don't tend to get out there but the simplest thing you can do the easiest thing you can do to incorporate more movement into your life is walking Genuinely, I did a video, I think it was last week or the week, yeah, it might have been just been last week about, you know, the one thing that you can do better to help generate more calorie burn. And that is just general movement across the course of the day. Getting your heart rate up is also beneficial for your respiratory health. And again, growing some muscle, you know, I talked about that in the nutrition side. So get some muscle on you. It's not going to make you look bulky. It's not going to make you look like a bodybuilder. 
uh, we don't have enough testosterone as a hormone for that to actually happen so you know i do hear this quite a lot from girls as I, I, they're interested in working out with weights and it is quite cool it's all over instagram but there is a still deep-rooted fear about us getting bulky and it's not going to happen um so don't be afraid grab a backpack shove some rocks in it um and, and go for a march give it a try and see what happens um so exercise isn't I like to think of exercise as not being for fat loss because from a calorie burn point of view, it's probably not as much as you might expect. Um, for example, it's, it's not an accurate, uh, calorie trackers are not accurate. I was using my, I've got a workout tracker app and I was in the garage this morning and it was quite a heavy session. It was deadlifts and squats um, and some bent over rows. So quite a lot of big compound moves, but basically was, it came up and said estimated calorie burn is 82 calories so i always like to bring things back to cheese and onion crisps which i love and a packet of tato crisps which are my favorite tato cheese and onion for all you irish ladies out there you'll know um 150 calories in a bag so didn't even burn enough calories to in comparison to a packet crisps so i don't choose to use um a calorie burn as a trade-off for food i use i use exercise as my tool for living longer um for building building more muscle mass so i live longer essentially so that when i get to 60 70 if i have a fall i can get myself back up when i get to i can't even remember how old i am but i can still lift the shopping into the boot and you know all the things that we take for granted just now that aren't always going to be there if we don't look after ourselves so there you go, fundamental exercise. Um, I'm going to do mindset at the end. Um, relationships and environment. These are absolutely critical. Now, mm -hmm. we are we are the average of the top five people that we spend the most time with. So if you're spending all your time, probably not been spending all your time with anyone other than your immediate family the last wee while. But if you're surrounding yourself with people who are not conducive to your goals. So if you've got a goal that you want to be fitter, stronger and healthier, but the people that you spend the most time with are, you know, chugging hunters a wine down their neck and eating takeaways all the time and not moving. You know, it's so easy to absorb that um, and then fall into that that type of routine. So look to it's not about ditching your friends it's not about getting divorced but it's looking outside your immediate circle and seeing like who inspires you who would you love to not be like but who's who's got a lifestyle that do, is conducive to their goals and what does that look like can they help you can they give you some advice on how to have a better more positive environment um and from an environmental factor you know what is in your cupboards? What is in your fridge? What is in your eye line? What do you pick when you go to the supermarket? All these things are all things within your control and we want to be able to, to have as much control as we possibly can. Um, especially when it comes to environmental factors because you know what it's like. You come home from work or you come down the stairs from work, whatever you are based. And it's like six o'clock, you're starving, you open the fridge, you open the cupboard and the thing that's facing you is a big block of cheese and some bread. Like that's cheese on toast for your dinner. And it's like cheese on toast is delicious, it absolutely is. But, you know, two slices of toast with some cheese on it, it's not going to fill you up very long. It's going to taste delicious and lovely, but it's not going to fill you up very long and it's probably quite high in calories as well. So from an environmental factor, if you then open your fridge, you're bored, you're, you're tired, you're exhausted, you know you can't be bothered cooking, but you've got a Tupperware tub there of pre-made chicken pesto that you can put in the microwave for two minutes, then you're going to take that option because it's easy. We want to make life as easy as possible. Sorry, my computer's doing funny things. If we have ease of use in our life, you know, time is our greatest resource, not, not money. You know, when it comes to being... 40s and 50s we are all time poor um so utilize what time you do have available to make other things easier for you in your environment and in your relationships um being around having a support network is is so important whatever your goals are you know if you've got somebody that's 
constantly putting you down or constantly enabling you or they know your triggers and they're they're in there going oh we should just have a wee takeaway tonight you know that's where you know conversations might need to be had and a, a really useful tool of having those challenging conversations is using a phrase an observational phrase um things like oh hey i've i've noticed that every thursday wednesday whatever you always come home with a with a takeaway um and it's lovely thanks for caring but i'm really trying to work on my health right now so when we start i put a post on instagram about this and i didn't get any likes i was raging because i actually thought it was quite funny um i'd said you know don't ever tell people you're on a diet because people want to be the one to take you off course like people want to be the like yeah i've done it but if you tell people you're working on your health like which asshole is gonna try and detract you from that i mean somebody that says oh i don't want you to be looking at your health like, that makes them a dickhead so yeah always never tell people that you're on a diet tell them you're looking after your health or something and it helps tremendously because you think they're gonna oh you don't need to lose weight because that's an enabling pattern that enables you to just then go oh well almost gives you permission to to throw the towel in um sleep sleep slash recovery also absolutely vital for fat loss and health this is very hormonal as well lack of sleep is stress stress equals cortisol cortisol inhibits fat loss and uh, lack of sleep then makes us hungrier releases a, a, a hormone that makes us hungrier it changes our behaviors we have less resistance we have we make poorer choices so sleep is absolutely critical now if you're only having five hours sleep a night you know it's not enough it's really not enough um you might feel like it's okay and that's what you're used to but from a physical point of view it's really not doing your body any favors so start looking at you know some quick wins reducing your screen time in the evening leaving the phone out the room having a wind down time before bed going to bed 15 minutes earlier for a week and then do another 15 minutes earlier uh keeping a notebook beside your bed so you can scribble down those immediate thoughts um i know certainly that i do i have that when i'm lying i'm like oh I'll just read a wee bit on my kindle and then boom oh my god i've just had an amazing idea about a new course or a new module that i want to do and you're like ah write it down and then it's the paper's problem it's not your problem anymore uh, and you can pick up in the morning and you can you can go to sleep so sleep is absolutely critical and then moving into mindset, which is probably my favourite topic in the whole wide world. I love it. Um, and it cha it's a, such a game changer. You know, nutrition, when it comes to fat loss, nutrition and exercise are tactics. They are tools that we can lever to get results. You know, we can change our nutrition. We can increase our exercise. We can adapt our exercise. We can. These are levers that we pull. But if everything is not screwed up here, then it'll, it just keeps bouncing. You, your weight keeps bouncing back and forward. So, you know, thinking, you know, for the most part, this is probably not everybody that's here, but for the most part, you know, the girls that I speak to have either either had years of relationship with food issues or emotional binge eating. Some people have had never had any issues with their relationship with food or their weight until they hit their forties and then it just goes horribly, horribly wrong. So we try different things, they don't work, it knocks our confidence, it knocks our self-esteem, we start talking negatively about ourselves, we start feeling negative. And when we start feeling negative, we start attracting more negative. And it sounds very woo-woo, but it's true. But when we start switching that thinking about, you know, being a bit more positive, thinking about how can I do things, how do I do that, rather than, oh, I can't do that, I'm just a failure, I'm just destined to be this way, and playing a little bit victim-y. You know, it, that's when we start acting like that, we get the negative behaviours. But the positive side is you start thinking with abundance and positivity and changing your language. That changes everything. That actually changes everything. So, um, you know, what instead of thinking things like, why is this happening to me? You think, well, what is this teaching me? What am I learning from this experience? Because... You can spend the rest of your life going, oh, it's not fair, so-and-so can do that. It's not fair, so-and-so has that lovely house. It's not fair, so-and-so has lovely holidays. But 
yeah, it is lovely that other people get to do things. But what do you get to do? What do you have? And everybody has positive things in their life. So if you're finding yourself struggling with mindset, one of the quickest tips I can give you is every morning, do three bullets of things that you are happy about or things that you're grateful for. And if you can start your day having that little bit more positivity, you'll find that will go into other areas of your life and you'll start thinking a little bit differently. So like mindset as a topic is so much bigger than that, like huge. That's just a key takeaway in terms of, you know, fat loss and health. But being able to see the bigger picture, being able to focus on the end goal, being able to focus on you know, why it's important, being able to focus on who who are you, you know, what does all this mean to you, is makes things so much easier and the chances of permanent success so much higher. So that is my five fundamentals for fat loss and health. So quite big topics and you know genuinely there could be about 20 million bullet points on that that powerpoint um but obviously i want to keep it simple um so what i want you to do is have a look at the document or even just from what i've said this this evening comment below with you know pick pick one or two of the five fundamentals that you think that you need work on and, and just put it below and we'll see what we've got to send you. Um, we've got a, a shed ton of training and stuff in the vault that, um, to share. So, you know, where where is the one or two areas that you think you need help with or need to improve on? And, you know, for me, nutrition is something that I will always be working on because as, as I'm getting older, it is much easier for me to store body fat. I do notice the change in my body. Um, and my, my exercise hasn't changed. I do, I do quite a lot of exercise. So for me, exercise, I don't need to worry about that because I get my 15,000 steps in and I'm training with weights four days a week and I do a cardio once or twice a week. So that for me is fine. Um, sleep. Mm, I'm normally six or seven hours and I do... There are some improvements that I can definitely make in terms of hints and tips. Um, mindset, I think mindset is one of those areas that you're never, it's never 100% and it shouldn't be. It's an area of constant evolvement, evolvement, is that a word? Evolution, I think is the word. Um, and trying to be that 1% better. You know, I am, I will never hit my peak, never, because the goals keep changing the my expectations of myself keep getting higher and that's what drives me i want to be the best that i can possibly be in every area that i can be but when i get to that bit i was just i'm just going to raise the bar and i'm just going to keep going keep going and keep going um so relationships it's a tough one actually relationships um because i work i've obviously got a team so those relationships are top notch and we are all very like minded and we all aspire at home. I don't know if it's hard or not. No, I don't think it is particularly hard when especially when you've got a nine year old. <laughs> like he's he's like minded and likes a bit of fun and uh he doesn't want to be he's got a book and if any of you actually have children, a really interesting book that we had for Archie is called How to Be Awesome by a guy called Matthew Syed um, and it's a little bit like you know not being trying to aspire for more not be average um, be the best you can be it's a really it's a really really good book and there's actually some snippets that I have used in modules um, that our clients get because it's 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 just a really nice easy to read easy to understand book and we like that as well so yeah, there's mine. Pop yours in the comments below. Don't be shy. You know, this group is for you to get that 1% better. This group is for you to um, head towards your goals, what you think they've not been possible before. And I actively, you can cut, actively encourage you to get involved mm -hmm. in, and share the areas that you think you need help with. Um, share Even share what you know that you could be doing differently and, and implement that. You know, it's... We're not asking you to suddenly overhaul your life in, in the space of two days, but progress, not perfection. Be better, not best. Apply 
a little change every single day until it becomes a thing, until it becomes something that you do. So, that's me. Does anyone have any um, any questions? Um, any questions? Is anybody else delighted that salons are opening back up? I'm getting my nails done on Friday and I'm so happy. So happy. Right, let me see what we've got here. Comments. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, lovelies. Hi, 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 hi. Oh, there's Shell Bells wearing two watches. Oh, Shell Bells, girl. Yeah, the calorie tracking is ridiculous, isn't it? I saw, I think it was on Money Saving Expert or one of those kind of like for the nation programs and they did lab lab testing with um somebody their calorie burn like from a scientific point of view and it was like 50 percent out like their watch had told them that they'd spent they'd burned 200 cal 2000 calories and it was actually a thousand um so yeah right there we go lots of lives gainer you just need to come in honestly gainer 90 days. That's all you need. Right, my darlings. No questions pop up, but keep the questions coming. Keep watching. As I say, there's a hundred, maybe, maybe not a hundred. Maybe that's a light, slight exaggeration, but there's a, a gazillion, a gazillion trainings that I am happy to share with you for you to watch, absorb, implement. And that's the key thing is implementation is key. I mean, I can sit and talk for hours about all this stuff and you go oh yeah that's really good thanks good information but if you don't do anything with it that's the challenge so you know what can you take away from today that you can implement a little bit with Alrighty. um as always if you want if you've got any questions specific to you if you need some help if you want us to jump on a quick call to chat through what's going on with you drop me a message um just dm me we can have a quick chat regardless if you're interested in being a private client or not all right. Um, but peace out. I'm away to make some salmon now. And I hope you all have a lovely evening. Right, take care, my darlings. Bye-bye.